Welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter. So if you're in for that, then keep watching. Okay, you guys, we have our jingle blocks. We're starting off the video the right way, okay? So these are the huge packs. These just came back in my store. They were around during Christmas time. I have them in a cake dish. You could use whatever dish you want and then we are gonna use coffee. So I got this idea from Megan from Glue Guns and Roses. I've used it quite a couple times. Love it. I use it with my wood beads too. You can also use um, like tea as well. Hopefully I made enough. I don't think I made enough coffee, but it's okay. I can mix them around. You need to make sure your coffee is hot. And then we all mix this around right on here. Get really glassy with it with my knife. And um, the longer you leave it in, the darker it's gonna be. I usually just leave them in for about five minutes or so to soak up all that and they will stay like this color that they are right now and I think this color is absolutely beautiful if you don't have stain this is a great 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 way to color your um, jingle blocks and then if it's sunny outside it they dry so fast I'm actually so I can keep crafting I am going to pop mine in the oven never done that before so I will let you know what I end up doing temperature wise and how long I put them in there so that they all thoroughly dry but I hope you guys get the idea and let's get in to these Jingle Block DIYs. Okay so for our first one we are going to do four sets of three. I'm going to try my best with the numbers. I will leave them down in the description box for you. So I'm using Star Bond which is like a fast acting um a super glue essentially uh it works amazing dries within seconds and i absolutely love it because there is no like wait time in between so i got this idea from megan's from glue guns and roses way back when i've actually made a set um already and wanted to show you guys my take on it so we are making coasters obviously and i am just stenciling this with my dollar tree stencils as you can see, we did the four sets of three and then we glued the squares together in opposite directions. And it's, I mean, super easy peasy, you guys. Now I'm just stenciling it. This is white linen. You can use your own ideas for a stencil or paint color. I did that with all four of them here. Now I am taking Mod Podge because of course there's gonna be moisture on top of these. So I just wanted to make sure I locked all of that paint in and protected our wood. You're going to do that for all four of these. I love the way these turned out. Now we're going to make our coaster box. So we are going to make a row. I think it's a row of 10 for the bottom of our coasters. And for this project, you're going to use 48 pieces altogether. So now, as you can see, I am stacking these. Now, I always do this before I start. Now, as you can see on the left, I kind of hang over the, the edge just a bit. I'm going to start gluing these. Basically, one is on its side, one is laying down, one is on its side, one is laying down. So this is going to be our pattern all the way around our coaster box here. So as you can see, like on the right side, see how one's sticking out, one's flush, one's sticking out, one's flush. So I go ahead, there's gonna be five on the on each side, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 in the front, and then we're gonna do something a little different to the back, which I will show you. So once you're done gluing the front and the side, you'll see right here on the back, I have to have two on its side for it to fit. But you know what, just turn that towards the back and then you'll be fine, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and glue um, our pieces together on the back now that we know what fits back there. That's why it's so important to play around with placement first. And you all know I gotta get my big head up in the shot like every time. So now I'm just gluing these to these sides right here. This was really easy and the Jenga blocks 
tumbling towers. These DIYs were so relaxing to just sit here, watch some Dollar Tree hauls, and just kind of like piece them all together. It was a lot of fun. And you guys, that is it. Um, these were so easy to make. Look at how high end those look. The stencils look amazing. They go with a previous DIY I made that'll probably go in my room as well. And I think it just looks so high end. Let me know what you think about this one. All right, that was my first Jenga block, tumbling tower, whatever you wanna call them, DIY. Now, full disclaimer, I know I'm probably not the original creator of any of these DIYs. I know tumbling towers and DIYs have been done before on other channels, but I have never done them on my channel and I definitely knew it was something that I wanted to try out. So maybe it is someone's first time seeing them. Maybe I do it a different way or explain it a different way. And if somebody else originally created it and I know who did, then I am going to make sure to give them a shout out in my video and put the link down in my description box for you to check out. So I hope you're digging these DIYs. I hope you're digging me and I hope you're digging the channel. And if you are, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below because I absolutely love reading them. And with that said, let's get into the rest of these DIYs. Okay, you guys, this one is so beyond easy. So we are going to essentially make L shapes. So I had to learn the hard way. At first I pieced them together one by one. If you make multiple L shapes and then put the two L shapes together, it goes by a lot faster. So we are going to make a ton of these, like a ton of these. Um, we are actually going to make, uh, you're gonna need 60 for this one, cause we're gonna do 16 squares on top of each other. So you can see I have a square, then a diamond, square, diamond. You're gonna keep stacking these up and that's all there is to this DIY, you guys. Like I said, these are so easy, but they make such a statement. I use 16 squares for my taller one and 12 squares for my smaller one, which I will show you. And as you can see, I'm just stacking them and gluing them on top of each other. I'm using this glass cylinder I got from a decorative clearance piece I got at Dollar General. And look at how fancy, like I don't know why, but these make me feel bougie, I don't know why. Like I just feel like they they look so high end and they look like I would have paid a lot of money for them, but I didn't. So I absolutely love these. I hope you guys um, like these Jenga Block DIYs as well. Now for our next one. So I wanted to show you the whole L shape. We're gonna use these boxes, squares a lot. So as you can see, I started gluing together L shapes, then gluing the L shapes together. Now with this star bond, you guys, you need a minimal amount and I liked using it because wood glue does take a little bit to set up. Hot glue creates a barrier where there's kind of like that little gap when it starts to harden up. And then some super glues, they take a while to dry still. So um, I thought this was really great. So sorry I lost the footage, but all I did was glue two of the squares together. And we are going to do, hmm, I think there's 78 total in this DIY. So, we are going to put these in a staggered place. Gosh, I'm not good at explaining this, am I? Uh, and then I decided I wanted to add more on top of this. So I made more of the squares. I'm just adding them on top. So essentially you're going to have five rows of three boxes or squares. And you could add more on if you want, or less on. I had no idea where this was going, but it ended up coming together. Can't wait to show you what I did with this DIY. So again, now I am taking two Jenga blocks. We're just gluing them together and I am going to make these for our legs. So I'm going to glue them on the outer corners on the tops and the bottoms. Then I'm going to glue some in the middle. That way it's supported on the outside. And then if you wanna set something on top of it, it's not gonna sag down and break. It's gonna be supported by these little legs. Now, once I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, this could be so cute for 
a necklace holder. If you set up the legs right, this could also be kind of like one of those bookshelves. You you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Like there's so many different ways you could take the Jangle Block DIYs. Um, and I love the whole like clean look of them. Uh, I hope, I know it looks like it's busy, but they look clean to me. Anyways, oh, Everett made that for me and said it was my craft room. He's so cute. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting some up on the middle outsides and look at how cute this is. So I don't know what to call this, a table, a tray. I don't know, but I totally envision it in my bedroom on a table just set up exactly like this or even in a bathroom would look gorgeous. I mean, I, I kind of love it. Let me know. All right, are we ready for the next one? So you guys, you guys have seen this like done a million times, but I wanted to try it for myself. So we're gonna do four sets of two and then I'm going to do two sets of two and then I am, oh gosh, can I stop saying and then? Sorry, you guys. And then, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so next we put two on the outer sides of these. Now make sure you try to get in the middle as best you can. Now I'm laying the Django blocks down and putting our like X on top of it. Now I'm standing it up. And the reason I stand it up right here is because I want to make sure that it's even and it's not lopsided because of course we're gonna put a candle or a plant or something and you don't want it wobbly. So for the rest of the legs, I stand this up and then attach them because the Jenga blocks are wonky. Not all of them are made equal. So I thought this would be a good way of ensuring that it's stable. All right, so that one is done. Now I'm gonna show you a little different take. Ooh, I got these at Dollar General. Okay, anyway. So I'm gonna show you another take on these Jenga blocks here, or maybe not. Oh no, I am. Okay, so we're gonna make one square. Then we're going to kind of make an L shape, but as you can see, I'm stacking one Jenga block on top of the other. Do you see that? I hope you do. Uh, you'll see it come together though. So we're gonna make four of those. And uh, I thought this one was really cool and this one could be turned into something else. So as you can see, I have two on the side. Now I am gluing, see this one right here? I just touch the sides and I hold it. And now to add more security, we're gonna get that square we made, put it in a diamond shape, and this is another little planter holder, or you can hang it up and you can totally use it, like I said, as a necklace holder. Um, you could attach it to, like drill it to something, and it could even be like a, uh, a coat rack. So many possibilities with these, and I just had, I mean, I have seen them everywhere. I had to try them out. Uh, and I like them. They're nice, they're simple, and like I said, they're very clean. All right, you guys, I just wanted to take a minute and let you guys know that I do have a vlogging channel called Crafting a Healthy Life. I share about my family. I have some other like kind of like home good hauls and things like that on there, so check it out. Okay, for this one, we are going, actually, I don't know what I'm making right this second, but we will figure it out. Okay, so we are going to be doing these sets of twos, and we're making a bigger square <laughs> than we did last time. So it's exactly like the baby square, except we're going to make it a bit thicker. So I'd, I had no idea where I was going with this, you guys, but it does come together well. So we are going to make... Um, you're going to need 88 pieces for this. And as you can see, all I did was take those squares. I connected four for the bottom, and then you're going to connect two um, for each side. So all I'm doing it, I'm gluing it to the outside of the bottom. So it's not sitting on top of the bottom. We're going on the outside of the bottom. Okay. So as you can see here, we got those squares we made two, two, four. So two, four, six, eight. You need eight squares for your sides and then four squares for the bottom. 
And that's all this one is. I just wanted to make a decorative box that I can put like in the bathroom to put some washcloths on, um, some soap and things like that. It could also be used for trinkets or exactly how it's set up right now on a, um, like a side table or something. But I thought it looked great. I love the way this coffee stain looks on these Jenga blocks, how it brings all that beautiful grain out. Hope you guys like it. These, like I said, they're so simple. Okay, for our next one, you guys, this is 10 pieces glued together. This DIY was inspired by Team Gravy. Y'all need, need, need to go look in my description box and follow that channel. They don't even have a thousand subscribers and it is absurd. So please go check them out. This came from their channel. So you guys, we are gonna get the jangle blocks and we're gonna stagger them. So as you can see, I connected one to the edge and left a little overhang there. And as you can see, we're, we're staggering them. So the one in the middle isn't attached to the base, but it's held together by the two that are. So I hope you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Team Gravy explains this a lot better than I am, but um, we are just gonna keep rotating those back and forth, back and forth. Now, when we get to the corners, um, this is why I staggered them so that they butt up against each other nice, and easy love all of the dimension that this piece has and you guys team gravy makes like lamps out of jangle blocks magazine racks a jewelry holder i mean and they look so high end okay so for my legs i am going to um put them side by side so as you can see i have one and then I put two, I love the way this looks and Team Gravies, they just put one leg and painted it black, which I thought was really cool. But um, I decided to do it this way and I really like the way that it turned out. So I did a short one and I did a bigger one um, because I just love the way that they turned out and I wanted two of them. So head over to their channel. I'll put the link down in my description box for you. She explains it so much better than I do, you guys. Um, so that is it for this DIY, you guys. And you are going to be shook when you see how beautiful these are. Uh, can I say stunning? Oh, do you see this? So much dimension. It just pops at you. It is such a great conversation piece. And they are going to look stunning anywhere. Thank you so much, Team Gravy, for the inspiration. Okay, for this one, we are taking a mirror from Dollar Tree. I took the plastic off. That was my preference. You can totally keep it on. Then I'm taking sisal rope. Uh, this is from Home Depot. And we are going to start gluing. So this mirror comes attached to this cardboard when you take the plastic off. We're going to wrap the sisal rope around. I'm pretty sure you guys are good with hot glue. Just make sure that you're putting it towards the back of the mirror so you don't get a bunch of hot glue on your mirror you are welcome for that beautiful face in the mirror like you're welcome you don't it's okay don't thank me in comments it's my pleasure so we're just going to keep wrapping this around now always make sure when you get next to like your starting piece make sure you put a, a kind of healthy amount of hot glue there and just push it into each other as hard as you can see how i'm holding it there for a while and then get it and start your next row so it almost looks seamless when you do it that way. So now cut it at an angle, that way it sits nice and flush. Do you see that, how well that goes? Now we're gonna start with our Jenga blocks. So I am going to play around with placement first. I do that with everything. It is so much better than hot gluing and messing up later when you realize your piece doesn't fit. So I am attaching the hot glue towards the back of the Jenga block here. That way we don't have any of the hot glue spilleth over onto our rope because that would not look fancy. And I'm gonna continue this all the way around. Now I'm doing my second row. And as you can see, I am putting hot glue towards the back in the middle. And I'm putting a little bit. You do not want the hot glue to go in the middle of the two Jenga blocks because it will totally show and that will not look pretty. So be careful and take your time with it. So I'm going to do two rows, three rows here. And I'm going to keep going around 
take your time. Like I said, you could also do this with the plastic still on there. The rope, me, I didn't like the colors together. So I decided to paint it white. I thought it would go with the coasters we made in the first DIY. And it would just kind of separate the jangle blocks from the rope a little bit better. That's, that's just my opinion though. And then after looking at this, I was like, mm, this needs more. So I added an additional row of hot glue and Django blocks. I don't, I don't know why it was just, for some reason it looked bare. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how that's possible because it's so busy, but it looked bare to me. So I cleaned it up and I, I like it. What do you guys think? I think it is so different and there's so much that's visually appealing about this. I can't wait to put it up on our wall. Uh, I tried my best to take a shot of that. Okay. So our next one here, we are going to, I'm trying to think of what this last one is. Okay. So for this one, we are going to do, let me see. I wrote it down eight rows of two and seven rows of three. And then I believe it's like me 10 singles or something. I guess we'll count it together. So I'm going to put all of these together beforehand. Now, sorry, I'm moving it fast because it's really repetitive. So you're going to take two, the row of two, row of three, row of two, row of three, row of two, row of three. And then I just put one single one at the very end. Now I do make sure to use my measuring mat to make sure that I'm keeping this nice and even so it's not all wonky and they're all going in different directions. Then with the other single Jenga pieces, I'm lining them up using the Jenga blocks, like where the lines meet up on the Jenga blocks, and I'm holding it there. Now this is going to become a jewelry holder. But like I said, if you were to put nails through the back of these, this can also be like a scarf holder, jacket, you know, whatever it may be. There, like I said, so many options. You can attach a sawtooth hanger to the back of this. Um, we're gonna use command strips, so I did not do that. But it's such a beautiful, simple piece. And you guys, these Jenga blocks right now are coming back in these big packs at Dollar Tree for a dollar. I think it took me a total of eight of the big ones to make every single one of these. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed these Jangle Block DIYs. If you did, please press like, please subscribe. I hope you enjoy the bloopers and make sure to check out my vlogging channel, Crafting a Healthy Life. We're trying a different stand today. Okay, all right. Oh God, it's so big right there. How do I look? I wish I had like a, you know how to use a jigsaw or something to cut out like unicorn disc designs and wood, you know? Something that makes me look really fancy. Okay. Shut up. So he's getting the middle. Maybe scoot back a little so you're not all up in everybody's face. That was lame, but we're going to stick with that. Okay, you guys, that was my first Jank Blocks Tumbling Tower DIY. Now, full disclaimer, I know I did not, I mean, okay, hold on. Hmm. Okay, I'm not actually not collabing with anybody. I put the disclaimer out there, um, and then I will talk about my channel, talk about my channel. Okay, you don't have a lot of time, sis. Let's let's do this. Do what? <laughs>